from Josh Herman, aka Goal! So Josh, great to have you here. It's lovely to be here. What do you think of Dublin's WizardCon Part 2? Oh, I'm really impressed. I think yeah. it's a really good show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely venue. I think uh, the layout's really good. Uh, no complaints. Bigger and better. It was a very small event last year, and this year we've kind of... Uh, uh, the official step is it's ten times bigger. Is it really? Yeah, apparently so, yeah. So we're excited. And we're excited to have you here. It's, it's, it's an absolute honor for us to chat with you about all things Harry Potter related. Thank you. No, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time in Ireland as well. So, um, yeah, very excited. Awesome. So, Josh, you played Gregory Guile, which is Draco Malfoy's best mate, all through the books and movies. Tell us, how was the atmosphere on set when the cameras were not rolling? Did you all hate each other in real life? Or were you just one big happy family? Yeah, no, we didn't. We, we, got, on, we all got on really well, right? Um, I wouldn't say it was like a family, like a lot of people say that. Um, but yeah, no, we, we all liked each other, we all got on really well. But we did actually sort of, the Slytherins kind of yeah. stayed with the Slytherins, the Gryffindors kind of stayed with the Gryffindors. It kind of just worked out that like way. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was that almost like method acting. Sorry? Almost method to acting, staying in the yeah, role. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> awesome. Um, but you're, this is an interesting. So you're here as the actor that played Gregory Guile. Everyone knows as Guile. But you're also one of the few actors that played Harry Potter. Yes. In the Chamber of Secrets, when Harry drank the Polyjuice potion to take your form. And how, how was that experience? Did you have to mimic Daniel Radcliffe, or did you just roll? I mean, you were pretty much a kid. Did you just roll with it? Uh, no, it's actually quite like a drawn out process. Um, because obviously, me and Jamie, who played Crab, we, we had the parts, we were Crab and Wood, but um, what the producers wanted us to do was do a show and tell. So basically, we had to act out the scripted scene yep. in, front of, in front of the producers, um, and then they would decide whether they, whether we, whether they wanted to keep it in. Yeah. Um, so, what they did, they set up private screenings for me and Jamie to watch the first film. I think I watched it about ten times. Like this is like, uh, Warner, like up in central London, Warner Brothers um, you know, private cinemas. Yep. Um, so yeah, we just had to watch it like ten times just to study their body language, their mannerisms, and things like that. Um, and then we had a drama coach who came in, and she uh, worked with us for about two weeks, mm -hmm. maybe. Rehearsed it, rehearsed it, rehearsed it, and then we did the show and tell one of the producers. They liked it. Put it in the film. That's awesome. So it was really, really, it was the opposite of what I thought. It was really taken seriously, and you were, you were yeah. studying and studying. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty impressive. It was, it was tricky. It was tricky. That's awesome. So tell me, what Harry Potter movie do you have the fondest memories of working on? And can you share any of those memorable moments with the crowd at WizardCon? Um, there's so many. I can imagine. So many. It was so many. But uh, yes. Um, there were many good moments. I mean, I remember seeing the sets for the first time. I remember seeing the Great Hall. The first time I saw that, I was just blown away. Mm. And uh, all, all of the sets, to be honest. And the, the room of requirement, that was, I was just saying to a, a woman, it was literally the size of this, this space here. Amazing. And not much of it was CG. Not much of it was CGI at all. Uh, they literally had mountains of furniture, like, everywhere. It was, it was incredible. Um, I remember seeing the Chamber of Secrets, first time I saw that set, absolutely blown away. And uh, you know, you've got the big statue of uh, Salazar yeah. in the Chamber of Secrets. That was entirely made up of polystyrene. Uh, to this day, it still bogs my brain. Yeah. Um, and they've like, sanded it and you know, sculpted it to, to look, and painted it to look like it was popular. Yeah. Well, that's what it said to Simon, it's movie magic, like they're the real magicians and these guys making these things appear. Yeah, they, they really were. Um, but yeah, there was, there was so many great moments in set. Uh, oh, sly laugh there, should we worry? Uh, I remember, there was, I, I tell this story a lot, to be honest, but um, this is usually the first one pops into my head. Uh, we were filming at King's Cross Station, and we were all in like, civilian clothes, we weren't in like, public clothes. Yeah. Oh yeah, naturally, because you're at King's Cross. Um, and we was, it was a really cold day, and we was all allowed hot chocolates. Mm -hmm. So there was just hot, there was cups everywhere, hot, hot chocolates. And uh, Tom, 
it was quite fairly boisterous <laughs> when, 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 he was young, when he was younger. And he thought it, he'd seen a cup on the floor and he thought it'd be a good idea to stamp on it. <laughs> Thinking it was empty, but it was actually a, a full cup of hot chocolate. He stamped on it and just it was just exploding oh, everywhere. Nice. All over, I think he had like white trousers on. Oh, chocolate everywhere. Um, then the costume, uh, costume lady came over and wasn't, wasn't best pleased. Oh, it's just one of many. Yeah, yeah. So tell like, when you got to the end of Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter, Deadly Hallows number two. So you've been working with these guys for like, like roughly ten years. You've known them, you've worked with them. Man, that last seeing the last shots, the last of everything must have been super emotional for you. Uh, or not. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it was, it was. Um, but the thing is, we filmed the last scene, but you, you never really know whether that's the last thing you're going to film. So they can always call you back in a week. Yeah, say, pick uh, up. Second unit, we're going to do this. And we'll be, yeah, pick ups. So, we all, we was told it was our last day. Uh -huh. And it was, um, it was a strange feeling, you know, it, was, it, it hadn't hit us yet, well, it hadn't hit me yet anyway. Um, so, yeah, it only, it only hit me about two weeks after, um, just knowing that I wasn't going back, you know. Because with every film, we've known that there's going to be yeah. a book and yeah. a film and we are always going to get invited back. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a strange feeling. It wasn't like, well, for me personally, it wasn't like, you know, tears and mm -hmm. negative emotion. It was, Sad. But you're slithering anyway, you wouldn't be teary or emotional. Exactly. Okay, Josh, we're going to take some uh, questions from the crowd. So, you guys are there. Do you have any questions for Josh? Okay, we've got a few hands there. Little, little witch here in the front. Here comes Helen. If you could be any character, which one would you be? Hermione. <laughs> No, um, it would have to be a bad guy, um, uh, Draco, or Lucius, or Voldemort. I like, I like bad guys. Voldemort, indeed. Okay, I think I'll move my chair a little further away from Josh. Hey, anyone else got a question for Josh? Helen has found... Would you rather be Voldemort or Sirius Black? Ooh, you better say Sirius Black. That's a good question. Um, you can say Voldemort. It seems like you can't top it. It's like it's the top. You know? They both die, so I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question for Josh. Have some over this side, Alan. What's the most difficult uh, scene that needed the most retakes? Um, the, uh, I mean, generally the, the polyjuice potion scene was tricky, um, but the most takes was the polyjuice potion scene again. Like when we take the muffins, the, the floating cakes. Uh, if I remember rightly, we did that maybe 60 times, 60 takes. And you wouldn't think wow. it's something so simple to take a cake, eat it, pass out. Um, no, it took a long, long time. And I think the problem they had was they wanted us to be, they wanted it to be synchronised. It was like eat the cake and then fall at the same time. And then a lot of time I was going and he was going. They wanted it synchronised. So that, that we were struggling to get right. And then the cakes were being, uh, they, were big, they were being held up with fishing, uh, fishing line. James bit one, pulled it, cut his lip, <laughs> blood coming down his face. Oh god. It was uh, it was it was quite strange how it took so long, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I could just imagine that scene. You you were twelve shooting the polyjuice motion scene. I was probably in uh, second movie, so uh, 14, 15. Okay. Still young and yeah. that's uh, cool. Okay guys, we got time for one more question for Josh. Yeah, um, I auditioned for Dudley Dursley, uh, first of all. I had maybe four auditions for Dudley, and then a screen test. I did my screen test with Dan. Um, not 100% sure whether he had been cast or not. 
So I don't know if he was auditioning as well, I didn't, I didn't know. But uh, yeah, I uh, got really far, I got down to the last two for Dudley, and then the producers decided to go in a totally different direction. Um, so neither of us got the part, and then they recast Harry Harry Belly. But uh, yeah, so they, they told me I didn't get the part three weeks, uh, three weeks later, they, they called me back and said they really liked you. Um, can you come and try for work? I was like, absolutely. And they, they told me there and then on the, on the day that I got the job. Wow, that's brilliant. And the rest is history. Well, thank you, Josh. Um, if anyone follows Josh on Instagram, you should check out what he's up to. It's pretty, pretty impressive, like the MMA stuff. And it's, oh, it's just check out his Instagram, it's pretty awesome. Josh, it's been an absolute honour and a pleasure to have you on stage. Thank you.